I'll leave um, Ayokunle's information in the description bar below. So I, I know you Thank and you I, you're most welcome. You and I, we we always have conversations about the Nigerian mindset and how interesting it is and how quite skewed it can be. But then also how um, Nigerians have this constant optimism. Like you can meet a Nigerian and they're literally in abject poverty and they will look you in the face and say, I'm going to make it. And they do. <laughs> like they do. But some of our mindset as a nation, it's quite flawed. So if you, I, I want to, yeah, I remember one of our conversations you mentioned about, especially with, I think, Yorubas, how I can't say, you know, my Yoruba is not the best, but how Yorubas don't really like to eat meat. They like to eat meat based on who's who's around. So I don't know if you remember that conversation. If you say it in Yoruba, yes, I do, and then and then yeah. say it in English, and then expand on some of our the mindset of Nigerians a little bit. That would be great. Thank you. All right. Oh. Uh, let me start with what I characterize as the appearance mentality. Right. That constitutes a major um, aspect of the Nigerian mindset. I mean, as much as we seem to like money in Nigeria, we seem to like the appearance of wealth more than wealth itself. Hmm. So if a rich man has two cars, wears big Agbada, Agbada is, you know, uh, a kind of a a piece of clothing (laughs) used in Nigeria that um, usually assumed to be, you know, something big men wear. And so if, if a rich man wears big Agbada and drives two cars, say uh, maybe he has two houses and all of that, those are not the things that make him rich. Mm. In fact, it is because he is rich that he has those things. The right. average Nigerian seems to be more interested in looking rich than in mm. being actually rich. And because of that, um, even the opportunity to become rich might, might, you know, pass him by while he's, you know, trying to pick uh, wealth. I heard the story recently of a young man who went to see a prospective um, customer. And while he was busy hyping himself about what he has done, what he has and all those things, yeah. he just looked at him like, well, this one is too big. I don't think I'm going to patronize him. So, you know. Wow. And, um, you know, that's about, we, we seem to be more interested in appearance. Right. But that's not all. We, we tend to spend more than we can afford to spend. And that's a real big problem. Because mm. if, I mean, things are difficult in Nigeria, but the average Nigerian wants to be, build a big house, ride a big car, throw mm. big parties and all those things when he can actually not afford them. And he would be better off not getting himself into those kinds of things. So it brings me to the Yoruba way of, you know, looking at oh. things like there is this big um, image of Yorubas that they like meat and my opinion about it is, is different. I think Yorubas <laughs> don't like meat more than other people. They just like to be seen as eating meat. And that's why when they're outside or when they're at a party, they eat big pieces of meat and all of that. But when you follow them to their houses, you will see that sometimes they just eat like a half slice of fish. You know? And um, you realize that they reserve, or we, I'm Yoruba, we tend to reserve our big lifestyle for when others are looking at us. Wow, and yeah. So, you know, if a man dies, his children want to, you know, tie cows around before the cows are even killed for the funeral because yeah. neighbors are going to count how many cows are tied you know, <laughs> how many cows were slaughtered for the funeral and all of that. And hmm. you realize that, you see that that's a mentality that's likely to keep people in poverty for much right. longer than it needs to be. Hmm. So, well, 
And there is this other thing, what I call the crisis of responsibility that we have in Nigeria. Wow. Nobody wants things to be better. Nobody is ready to, you know, put in the work. Hmm. We want a corruption-free Nigeria. But each of us don't, does not mind some corruption as long as wow. the corruption pays us. We think it's other people who should not be corrupt. We should, because whether we like it or not, hmm. to a considerable extent, we are, we are beneficiaries of corruption. And say. so as much as we want corruption to be gone, we also know that there are advantages in corruption. Mm-hmm. Advantages that we are not ready to give up. So, you yeah. know, we know that this country is not going to really progress as long as there is endemic corruption. But we think mm-hmm. it is our politicians who should stop being corrupt. Everyone, well, not everyone, but uh, in the A sizable Nigerian chunk, seems, yeah. Yes, the Avenue Nigerian seems to not have much problem with corruption as long as he is a beneficiary of that corruption. Wow. That is that there are also problems about people who don't want to reach but don't, they want to pass, people who want to get jobs but they don't want to do the jobs but they want to mm. you know, be paid for the job. And I ask people, what is your definition of fraud? Of what we call 419 in Nigeria. <laughs> 419 means you collect money for a good or a service you have refused to deliver. And wow, it comes yeah. down to a 419 that you want to collect salary or collect payment for a, for a job you are not ready to do. So mm. unless we fix things like that, we are likely to keep going around in circles. Wow, wow. You're probably going to get some people angry <laughs> in the comments, but I think what you've shared is extremely valid. And I say that as well in terms of some of the issues where we're so quick to say, oh, it's a Buhari problem. So if I go to, you know, if I go to Balogun Market and something is 500 Naira, but you want to charge me a thousand Naira, is that a Buhari problem or a Nigerian problem? So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. So there's also this thing of, you know, in when you think about, we just, in fact, we're generalising here, you know, we know there's exceptions to the rule, but the culture of living large, looking flashy, there's also this obsession with being associated with the abroad. So when I say the abroad, I don't mean like Benin or even Cameroon, because to me, if I'm in Nigeria and I go to Benin, I'm, I'm actually abroad. But people mean like, how do you say in Igbo, or I never say Obodo or whatever. Please say oh, that. Don't yeah, so the foreign, like where white people are. Uh, so, mm, West. Ilu Ilu Ilu, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's also that obsession. So, you're wealthy, you want to appear wealthy, or you are wealthy, and there's this, you want to be associated with things which are westernized. And I remember you, you were telling me, like on Twitter, <laughs> I'm really, we're really exposing people, but it is what it is. On Twitter, if Nigerians have uh, some, not all, have a flag of where they're from. Sometimes uh, they'll have a flag. Sometimes, yes, they actually are from that place. They reside in that place. But other times you were mentioning how that's a place where they want to aspire to be. So even when you had, we had that conversation and then I started to, re- when I remember, I started to recall uh, conversations I've had with Nigerians. And then some of my mates will be like, they're Nige, they have a Canadian flag. And you ask them, where do you want to go? I would love to go to Canada. I'm like, oh my days, this is a thing. Like people really, it's almost like they wish to be in a certain place. So they almost, I don't know, try to, people call it prophesy or uh, essentially aspire to be uh, go to that place. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There is, there's a lot of that in Nigeria. Yeah. Even that we're very religious people, we believe that, um, you know, you speak these things into existence as it right. where you, if you believe in it so much, you make it happen. Well, I it's also really think <laughs> that, you know, if you want something to happen, you put in the work and make That's it happen, right. not just keep, keep um, uh, you know, making noise about it. Right. So, you right. know, and we, the problem I have with the abroad mentality in Nigeria. Going abroad is great. There is a lot of advantage in being abroad 
that you don't get in Nigeria. But right. I think that going abroad in Nigeria should not be an end in itself. It should be a question of what are you acquiring? What are you getting that you didn't get at home? And all of that, not just that you want to go abroad. I don't believe somebody should go abroad just for the sake of going abroad. You should go abroad because, well, there is an advantage you get in there that you are not getting in Nigeria. Yeah. And, uh, but again, it's just like my old um, opinion about the Nigerian attitude to wealth. Hmm. We are not thinking of what we can do with wealth. Wealth, therefore, becomes an end in itself. And if you don't have the wealth, at least you should appear to have it. And wow. That yeah. seems to have become an end in itself. So a whole lot of things are in, you know, in the domain of appearance in Nigeria, being educated, being wealthy, going abroad, all those things, they become ends in themselves rather than means to, you know, to an end, the end of bettering yourself and bettering the environment you come from or you belong to. So. Wow. Wow. So having spoken about the abroad, I think it's only inappropriate that we speak about the Japa culture. So for those watching, to Japa is essentially, it's a Yoruba word, isn't it? And it means to... Yes, it is. Leave the slang yeah. of a sort. So uh, go on. Do you want to It's define difficult it? to translate literally. It's difficult to translate literally, but since it's a slang. But essentially it means like... To leave. Flee. Yeah, like, to flee. Like, run. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, take off and right. not look back. Right. When someone travels abroad and comes back, that person does not qualify as having Japa. So wow. Japa is to to leave and not come back. Wow. So maybe, you know, I didn't know about the I didn't know about the not coming back. I thought it was to leave. I didn't know it was about the not coming back. So that's um that's... Japa is to run. Essentially like you escape from a you know <laughs> from a difficult situation, yes. Um, see, whether we like it or not, I am not a, a very enthusiastic person when it comes to you know, running away from Nigeria, but I do understand people who want to run. Yeah, me too. Think, think, things are really difficult in Nigeria, whether we like to admit it or not. Um, mm. People, most people are receiving the same salary today that they were receiving five years ago and mm. yet the cost of things five years ago were at best half of what they are today maybe even less than half so things are difficult and i can understand not just that the economy is tight things are difficult there's also you know so much lack of security people mm. sleep and they just don't know whether they're going to wake up you don't wow. know when you're going to receive a phone call that someone close to you has died or has been kidnapped or, you know, hmm. there is all of that. So people want to leave. People want to run. People just want to disappear. However, when we have looked at all of that, we remember yeah. that the places they are running to, if the citizens of those places had run away, are not confronted their problems. Wow. There will be nowhere to jack out to. Hmm. You know, the economy, I me, mean, God doesn't come down from heaven, no matter how much you pray, God doesn't come down from heaven to fix an economy. And hmm. a government is only responsible to those who demand responsibility and accountability from it. So right. we, we, I mean, it's a pipe dream to expect that the government will suddenly show up one day that will do all the nice things without being, without it being demanded and insisted on by the people. Right. So, yes, it's nice to, to, to flee. I mean, it's just, uh, we, are, we have reached that point in our history. However, mm. in that town, wow. uh, if one can make it in Nigeria, one shouldn't, uh, you know, be overly uh, concerned about running away. And if there are things to fix, then let them be fixed. And right. we owe ourselves the responsibility of making that happen.
Mm. Well said. Well said. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. It, it, thank you for sharing. It, it really is a touchy one, isn't it? To japa or to <laughs> yeah to say. And someone like myself, I don't really like to comment too much on it because you're foreign. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you're not even. You don't get the struggle. And it's yeah. true. But then when I speak with several Nigerians, I I understand it, but it's still not my reality. Um, so I'm I don't. I try not to critique those who decide to do so, but then I'm, you know, have a plan and what is the purpose really? Because you can leave a place and and it can be way worse than the place you're trying to leave that you've left. But um, yeah, so I know you do like you you know you well they won't know, but you like traveling. So what are some of your favorite places you've visited in Nigeria? Because there's another thing about the Japa culture. There's all this coming abroad and you know going on holiday abroad and not really doing holiday in Nigeria I know someone had mentioned ages ago how when she would tell people she's like myself British born whatever Nigerian that she's going to Nigeria for holiday people used to look at her like she was mad to say why would you go to hol holiday in a place like Nigeria if you've been to Nigeria um I yeah I, I've been to quite a few places in former Yoruba land so yeah and it's it's honestly a stun it's the it's a stunning place like various places where we're from Mikiti is stunning come to Ekiti, it's beautiful I'm not just saying it and you it's know. hilly you it's know. hilly yeah the hills, gonna... are, uh, the hills are mesmerizing great, yeah and great views absolutely mesmerizing and we're nice people from Ekiti are nice but then when there's something political they're troublemakers but that's a whole nother story but I think, <laughs> this is what my mummy says all the time, I think, yeah, and people do say it every now and again, there is a massive need of investment in tourism in Nigeria because sometimes I watch videos and I'm like, what? That's Nigeria. Like, there's a place, I, you know this already, I really would like to visit in Niger. It's called Bauchi. And if my family's watching this, they're probably going to text me, if, if you go to that place, Mafu and Igbasbo, because it's in the north, in it, And if there's all this thing about, oh, don't go to the north of Nigeria. But if, you, if you've ever, just try and Google Bauchi and Bauchi tours and things like that, it looks absolutely stunning. So please do share with, you know, those watching places you really oh, like nice. to visit in Nigeria. I know some of some of your answers are going to shock people, but I think it's really important that you share where you like to go to yes. Nigeria and where uh, would you like to your dream place to live as well. People might be shocked in Nigeria. Yeah. In Nigeria. All right. Uh, before I respond to that, maybe I should start by mentioning what you uh, by making a reference to what you said about investing in um, uh, tourism in Nigeria. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, but. Uh, nobody is going to be interested in that as long as we have not fixed security issues in Nigeria. That's true, yeah. So, uh, whether it's from the, on the part of government or those who want to invest in, uh, in um, tourism, security has to be fixed first. People, right. can't, people don't want to uh, engage in tourism into places where they don't feel safe. That's the point. So, and... Moving around Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria and I've lived in Nigeria all my life. Uh, people in Nigeria know that as local as you are, there are still places that are not safe. Not to talk of hmm. you know, people who are foreign. Being foreign uh, exposes you to some extra amount of risks and all of that. So yes, <laughs> yeah. that has to be fixed. Especially not like you. I mean, you are not foreign... On, on, until you open your mouth, open my and mouth, speak <laughs> and walk and speak, fast, <laughs> and speak with right? A foreign accent, but yes, the Nigeria is beautiful. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a story I was writing about. You know, I titled it "Beauty Haram." That mm. absolutely, you know, ultimately in Nigeria, some people might be Boko Haram, which means. They think um, book is haram, but it Western. seems that they have yes that the, that Western education is um haram, which is um forbidding or bad or yeah. you know, impure. It looks like the average Nigerian is beauty haram. We just don't seem <laughs> to see the beauty. Wow, 
in Nigeria, and we seem to be all too ready to destroy natural beauty in Nigeria. People mm. don't care about trees or bodies of water or things like that much of the time. Now, the places I've been to that I consider really beautiful, I am from Ekiti. Ekiti is number one. Ekiti no. has nice vegetation, yeah. great views because of the mountains. Blue and skies, not like the sky in Lagos. It's blue, blue. So, you know, the whole place is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, a place like Ekon, for example, you could stand on any of the ridges and look, you know, into the horizon. And yeah. You just get wild out. Now, if you've been to Northern Nigeria, Northern Nigeria seems to be particularly beautiful. I'm not from there, but I think it's really beautiful. If you go yeah. to, say, Niger State, for example, there are bodies of water, the Kanji, the Shiroro, the, mm. um, um, there are other waterfalls, like uh, Gurara Falls, it's there. And uh, it, it, the, the savanna seems to have a lot of, a wide variety of um, wildlife, especially migratory birds. I'm not wow. an expert on that, but I mean, my, my experience says, you know, a very wide variety of birds. You see them all over the place. And if you've been, if you've been to the Joss Plateau, yeah. Your city, the city ma- sometimes makes it uh, a bit difficult to see the beauty. But when you step outside the city of Jos, you know, towards places like Barking Ladi, um, uh, mm. Shandam, and places like, you know, it's really, uh, the beauty could be overwhelming, to be honest. Wow. wow. If you've been to Bauchi, you know, places like that. One place that I uh, found particularly fascinating is, you know, that stretch between Meduguri and Yola, which I is haven't been yet. Yeah. There, yes, uh, which is today the stronghold of Boko Haram. Hmm. The place is really, really beautiful, and in fact, it was what inspired my title of Beauty Haram. You know, right. I mean, a place this beautiful beyond that, the, the you know the the, the, the power of people who don't want anything good to happen. So, wow. you know, you look at those places, the mountains, the horizons, because the vegetation is also sparse. You could see very far into the distance. You could wow. see the mountains, see the fields of different things growing. And, you know, in that part of Nigeria, there is no time of the year that something is not being grown. And it's such a wow. beautiful thing. So, you know, uh, Nigeria has to make efforts to fix security roads and all those things because Nigeria has potentials. That's, I sincerely believe that. I mean, I will not call myself a romantic patriot, but right, these, are, right. just the, these <laughs> are just the hard realities that I see. Right, right, right. Where would I like to live? In Nigeria. If there was security, security wasn't an issue. Yeah. Yes, yeah, somewhere between, uh, between, Shend- between the Just Plateau and right. F1 in Ekiti. Okay. Between those two, yes. I like the hills and the vegetation. Brilliant. Brilliant. So guys, thank you so much for watching and please check out the other episodes and I'm going to leave, um, Ayokunle's information down below. So please do check out his writings, his stories. If you want to learn Yoruba, please do hit him up as well. And like I said, I'll leave his information. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Make sure you share to do at least one friend. Ray.